Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm Ray Loy. Uh, I wear. It doesn't it? Doesn't matter. It just usually takes a second. God, just forget it. Okay. Make it easier. It, 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 there's no problem. <laughs> okay, um, uh, let me forgot where I left off. So, uh, uh, hello everyone. I'm Ray Loy. I'm from the uh, Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. I I wear several several hats at ALCF. Uh, I'm in the Performance Engineering Group, and I'm the lead for ALCF's training as well as the lead for uh, debuggers um, and uh, math libraries. And uh, in my capacity here today, uh, I'm uh, in, will be, uh, I have been involved for a long time with the Argonne training program on exascale computing and I'll be the program director next year. I've been the deputy program director for uh, the last four years and involved with it since the beginning. Um, so, uh, and uh, Marta Garcia has been the uh, um, program director for the last uh, four years. So, um, really my goal here is to just let you know what it's all about because you or people you work with might be good candidates to attend uh, this kind of training program. So, um, why? Um, well, as I think we know, uh, the most powerful supercomputers are, have very complex uh, architectures as well as software environments, and it's not getting any simpler. Right? The, the, the trend is obviously uh, more complexity to get more performance. And consequently, the applications that run on these machines are getting more and more complex. So there is a critical need for people who understand how all this stuff works and therefore in-depth training uh, for these computational scientists. Otherwise, the facilities will not be fully utilized and we will not get the kind of science that we want out of them. So ATPESC was founded by Paul Messina in 2013. Uh, if you're not familiar with Paul, he was a founding member of Argonne's Math and Computer Science Division. Uh, he's recently retired, but at the time that ATPESC was created, Paul was the director of science for um, ALCF. So what, what is ATPESC? Well, it was conceived as a two-week intensive retreat uh, where uh, people could attend and um, get uh, uh, training from not just anyone, but actually um, foremost researchers, computer scientists, HPC experts from U.S. national labs, university, and industry to get training directly from uh, these very experienced people who are leaders in their field. So it's not just um, some postdocs uh, running some classes. Uh, it's it's uh, meant to be sort of straight from the horse's mouth. And this this contact is a very valuable component of ATPESC. Uh, who's the target audience? Well, uh, advanced uh, PhD students, uh, postdocs, and early career computational scientists, although there's uh, a lot of flexibility in that definition. Um, the program covers all the fees involved, including um, domestic travel, meals, and lodging during, during the program. So, um, when I say domestic travel, uh, people from other countries are eligible to attend, but they do need to uh, get themselves into the U.S. Uh, before we, we start picking up things. And because of the, the, the large benefit from uh, all of this, uh, it, it's a fairly competitive process to apply and be accepted uh, by ATPESC. Um, the applicants uh, must have experience in either MPI or OpenMP. Um, they must have run on at least one HPC system. So someone, someone who is uh, only working on their PC is 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 not 
not yet ready for this kind of material, but someone who's run on a, on a company cluster or a university cluster or something like that, uh, that, that, that certainly uh, counts. And the person needs to have concrete plans to conduct computational science and engineering research on some kind of large-scale large computer. So, of course, if they're doing um, dissertation research or if they're um, starting their research career, uh, whether it's in a uh, university or an industry, uh, then that, that is an excellent fit. So here's a, a group photo. This uh, is from this year's website. So the, the uh, photo of the participants may be from 2018. Um, uh, just to give you an idea of the size of the class, we had uh, this year 73 people attending from a broad variety of institutions, um, both uh, uh, not just labs, but uh, universities and, um, and various uh, corporate attendees as well. <clears throat> hmm. Half of my slide is not actually showing. Oh, it's an animation. Okay. This is what happens when you borrow other people's slides. Okay, so where is that? As I said, it was planned as a retreat. So it's not held at Argonne on purpose, but it's, it's not super far away. Uh, if you look at the map, um, it's uh, held in St. It's it, at least for the last few years, it's been held in St. Charles, uh, which is uh, northwest of here, about a 45 minute drive. It's uh, in the direction of Fermilab from here, if you know where Fermilab is, and then a little bit farther. So, uh, what do we cover in the AtPest curriculum? Well, it's two full weeks, and there are, it's, the, the content is divided into eight tracks. Uh, obviously, some of the tracks are multi-day tracks. Uh, so we, we cover hardware architecture, and uh, uh, so most of the track leads are, are Argonne people, although a few of them are co-led co with um, uh, people from other labs. Um, but as you'll see on the next slide, there is a lot of involvement uh, of lecturers from all over the place. So I'll just uh, concentrate on the topics right now. So hardware architectures is our, our first track. Uh, the programming models and languages, so that includes MPI, OpenMP, things like that. Um, despite the fact that people need some, uh, have some prerequisite in using it, right, we're trying to round off their knowledge about these things as well. Uh, data of intensive computing, right, which is much uh, more um, relevant topic uh, lately, and visualization and data analysis, um, numerical algorithms and software, Performance, performance tools and debuggers, the track that I co-led and have co-led for uh, several years. Um, software engineering, um, because it doesn't really help if you write it and no one can use it. And machine learning and deep learning is uh, actually a new, a new track or, or we've expanded it uh, from previous years. And of course, the curriculum is always uh, undergoing review uh, for improvement and so forth. But I'll just mention that these track leads are uh, a, you know, a variety of, of uh, senior people here at, at the lab, whether they're involved with ALCF or MCS or uh, um, uh, other activities at Argonne. And the lecturers that are in those tracks, well, there are a lot of them. I've pasted them all on here. And it really takes an army of people to produce um, two weeks of uh, content uh, all day long. And so um, besides the, uh, the speakers themselves, we have uh, review reviewers, a whole committee uh, of uh, folks reviewing the uh, student applications, uh, the administrative staff involved is quite large. There, there are over 100 people involved in this um, activity. And it, it really takes uh, uh, all year to plan an event like this. 
I, just as an example of the depth, uh, I, I condense the um, agenda from this year's performance tools and debuggers track. So this was uh, one whole day of activity for the attendees. So uh, we started off with a uh, talk on um, debuggers, uh, one talk from ARM on the, uh, on the DDT debugger and map profiling, another talk from a rogue wave representative um, on uh, TotalView, uh, hands-on time to try out the things, the tools that are being discussed. Then we moved on to uh, performance um, measuring tools, both from Cray and uh, open source tools, such as the ones from HPC Toolkit and uh, Tau, uh, which are supported on various DOE systems, including ours. Uh, then we rounded out the day with uh, Intel tools, with VTune and uh, Advisor. And then uh, after dinner, there's typically a um, uh, two to three hour hands-on session after dinner. So you can see it's quite an intensive uh, program. This is only one, one day of it. Uh, and um, when you attend, uh, you really get your money's worth. So to go along with the lecture material, I mentioned the hands-on. So what can people uh, run things on, right? So they, they have access to all of the user facilities um, from the DOE Office of Science. So primarily um, Argons, right? Our currently our Blue Gene systems, Mira Cetus Vesta, our visualization system, Cooley, and our latest KNL system, Theta, right? Of course, um, uh, as time goes on, uh, we retire various machines and, and bring on new ones, such as the upcoming Aurora. Um, Argon also has some testbed machines uh, in something called the Joint Lab for System Evaluation, JLSE, and the attendees had access to those. And they also had access to NERSC uh, NERSC's facilities uh, through CORI and OLCFs on Summit. So they, depending if they had uh, either familiarity or their code was more applicable to uh, one of these systems, they were free to use all of these. And for people who are not actually at one of the labs or have um, time a project on them, right, this is, an, this is a golden opportunity to run things that are larger um, and on architectures that they might not uh, have access to. So uh, another part of ATPESC is that uh, uh, every evening uh, during the dinner session, uh, we bring in a, a, a variety of dinner speakers on all kinds of different topics. Maybe they're relevant to the uh, um, attendees right now, or maybe they'll be relevant later on in their career, but uh, the goal is to give them exposure to as much as possible um, while they're at, um, at PESC. And then another thing that the attendees are, are uh, um, uh, um, offered is uh, on the weekend, in the middle of the program, is a tour of Argonne National Lab, which is obviously here, but they're in St. Charles. So um, <clears throat> they get to uh, come here and, and check things out, uh, and uh, we show them around and uh, uh, get a tour of the machine room and so forth. So what do they get out of it? Hopefully exposure to a lot of new ideas and concepts in HPC. Now, it's, it's my experience that a lot of people, um, whether it's in grad school or on the job, they have a, a, often are picking up things somewhat ad hoc. They join a project, uh, they need to know this, they need to know, uh, they need, their, their goal is to extend the code to do, uh, to, to enter, you know, to, to do a, a new, um, twist on a computational model or something like that, and they learn what they need to do to do that, but they don't really have the perspective of different ways to do it, right? The shortest path to the solution. So we're here to give them some breath, right? They need some basic um, experience to, uh, to be qualified to attend. 
Um, but, um, you know, we're here to round out, fill in all the corners and, and stuff like that, as much as one could in a two-week program, right? It's already uh, very intense. And as I mentioned, the big bonus of uh, taking part in the program uh, is to get access to the supercomputer resources at the three uh, sites. And um, um, then that also... Uh, um, gives them the opportunity to uh, apply for um, discretionary time, which is how is sort of our, our, our way of uh, starter, uh, setting up starter projects towards a um, large allocation, um, which uh, um, they would get if uh, through another competitive process. And then, uh, right, the other major benefit is to be able to talk face to face with these um, leaders of the fields of research in um, HPC, whether it's the uh, hardware architects or the software developers and tool developers and so forth. And um, it's, uh, it's always great to see the attendees, um, you know, discussing uh, with these people that they would not have otherwise uh, had contact with. Um, uh, had they not come to the program. So uh, the attendees, of course, are, are there and see the presentations and so forth, but uh, a byproduct of at PESC is that we also make available to everyone um, the slide presentations as well as the recorded video of the presentation. So even if you are either unable or um, uh, not accepted to the program, you can benefit from all previous ATPESC uh, dates by checking out our website. You can go on there and you can sit down and watch a 45 minute video about how to, um, you know, use uh, Intel VTune or, you, you know, how to use, uh, um, you know, some software package or, or, or hear uh, a discussion about uh, various computer architectures, right? So it's all there. Um, the latest ones are from this year are not posted quite yet, but they will be up there. And uh, if you like to listen to HPC podcasts, we're making that available this year too. So you can listen to it in your car on the way to work. Um, the current years, it's fairly straightforward if you go to the AtPesk website. Um, about where off of the agenda uh, you would find the slides linked uh, in this more info field and uh, there. For previous years, um, it, at, you can see at the uh, top of the screen here, it says uh, past programs and you can access the agendas for all previous years there. And the uh, slides and videos are linked directly off of those agendas. So what makes this program possible? It's the Exascale Computing Project, and uh, we are very grateful to be able to fund this activity. And uh, uh, so, what do you do if you or someone you work with or someone who works for you would like to go to ATPESC next year? So what I would advise doing is going to our website and at the bottom of the page of the home page, there's a little click link to subscribe to the mailing list. I'll provide these slides um, for the, the workshop here to uh, post. Um, but um, um, go, go to our website, subscribe to our mailing list, then when the call for applications comes out in January usually, um, you'll get a notice about it and all the info about how to apply will be on the ATPESC website. And um, uh, my advice about how to apply is that you'll see in the instructions that various prerequisites are required. For example, the experience with MPI or the experience on running on some kind of a parallel computer uh, previously. And what the reviewers are looking for are details about that experience. Not just Joe Smith uh, knows MPI. That, that, 
is not terribly helpful to a reviewer, right? You know, something more like uh, Joe Smith um, developed a uh, science code for molecular dynamics from scratch using MPI and it does this and this and it runs up to uh, 2,000 uh, processors on a cluster, blah, blah, you know. Details like this are what uh, show um, the level of experience that the person has had and how qualified they are. So I'll, I'll leave uh, that. And um, well, in the end, the goal is that uh, we help train a new generation of computational science and engineering people to uh, leverage the supercomputing systems. And uh, Aurora will be here soon. And uh, other systems are in progress as well. So uh, thank you. And uh, I, if you have any questions, please let me know. I just want to clarify, your training program is open to people in industry? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's one back there. Right, not a, not a question, but a, a, a compliment. We've had one of our uh, young computational scientists uh, get uh, get accepted for the program, and he couldn't say enough good about it, both in terms of the content, but also of the peer exposure as well. Well, thank you. And Rupak has been a hey. Rupak has been a dinner speaker himself. Right. So I just <laughs> wanted to pile on that. So yeah. So not only have I given a dinner talk like maybe two years ago or something, but then we have had uh, good participation from NASA as well, and, and I've heard very good things about it. So again, just to add more to what Ray said, um, think about who you can send to this training. <laughs>